Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. A frustrating question we regularly receive is, can you still plant during summer? What? <laughs> Hear why it's a great time to plant, and you can plant anytime during our first segment. The three pillars of an attractive landscape or any planting are color, texture, and form. Listen to how you can improve any project during our second segment. Hummingbirds are here. Set up a hummingbird feeder and your yard will become a regular stop on the hummingbird search for nectar. Hear how you can become a hummingbird haven during our third segment. Mosquitoes are going to be a problem with all of this wet weather we're having. Four cases of malaria have been reported in Florida for the first time since 2003. We'll have some ways to stop this menace from attending your barbecue. Listen how during our fourth segment. So what's bugging you? Wasps and hornets are bugging me. I'll tell you what to use to evict these stingers during our final segment. So stay tuned. We'll be back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome's triple action contains 70% neem oil and 0.25% pyrethrins as a concentrate and ready to spray. It is an insecticide, fungicide, and miticide label to use on vegetables, fruits, nuts, herbs, spices, and ornamentals. This organic OMRI listed product controls a wide variety of insect pests and diseases, including aphids, scale, spider mites, white flies, rust, leaf spot, and powdery mildew. This insecticide is an all-in-one bottle that will cure just about any problem you may run into throughout the year. Fertilome's triple action has been helping gardeners across the country for years. Best to apply in late evening and early morning hours. Mix one ounce, which is equivalent to two tablespoons in a gallon of water. The best part is triple action may be used up to the day of harvest. So, the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Triple Action and expect to have the best-looking plants in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome, everybody, to Bloomers in the Garden. Why aren't you planting that new landscape? Oh, that is the question, right? <laughs> there is no time you can't plant. Let me repeat that again. There is no time you can't plant. All you need to do is just add water. Right, Len? If you install the landscape the first day of spring, mm -hmm. you're still watering it now. There is no right. difference. No there difference. is no difference. Yeah. Uh, some of the things that you may not have had as big a selection as you have right now, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Some of those plants that come from the West Coast and adapt to our area and, yeah. and this uh, from the East Coast. And that 
it's a fine time to plant. It is, it is hot. It is hot. Here, here are some, here are some things that, that I want you to think about. Um, I think we get more returns on plants this time of the year for people that are doing landscapes. It's not after they're planted. It's while they're waiting to plant them. They forget to water them. That's right. I went down to the shore. You know? <laughs> for a whole two weeks. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, every day? You know? Oh. <laughs> and, and it's not necessarily every day, right? You index finger probe. Probe, that's it. You take that index finger and you put it into the pot mm-hmm. and you see if it's dry. You can feel by the weight of the pot if it's dry. Mm-hmm. If they're planted... You stick that finger in the soil on the side on the side where the the root mass is, and if it's dry for the first couple inches, you water it. If it's if it's moist or showing moisture, you leave it alone, and you develop a pattern over time. You over pattern. So, Julio, oh, we're gonna bring we're gonna bring Aaron into the yeah. conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. hey, hey, we, hey, hi, Aaron. What did you tell me right before the show started? <laughs> yeah, we haven't planted. We haven't planted because uh, it's been raining a lot, and uh, I was kind of uh, concerned. I read online, you know, maybe just a myth. <laughs> I read online. <laughs> you right I, I read online. Sorry. They said that you can't really plant when it's raining because of drainage issues. So I, you know, I don't know. I'm uh, new to it. I think you just didn't want to do it, and that was a convenient excuse that you gave your <laughs> yeah, wife. To it's say. just been it's raining, like, man. Don't give me that. All right. So, so. And and you had mentioned like air pockets. Air right. pockets w- when occur when you don't press down and back when you're backfilling your, the sidewalls of your plant. But rain, I mean, you got to water it. So rain's yeah. not rain is not a, it's going to hurt anything. Um, the only real time you can't plant is when the ground is frozen, and I'm talking about where it's frozen like a foot down. And instead of putting soil back against the root of the plant, you're putting back like soil ice chunks. Yeah, and that leaves the air pockets that happen to kill off the plant or can hurt the root system. But right now, it's a great time to plant, um, again, because you've got lots of selection. Now, Julio, that as far as... You are a proponent of soaker hoses. Oh, yes. Always. Tell me all about that. Yes, that's a hose that has all these little uh, holes that they've planted in there so it'll come out really slow. It's a slow process of watering your, your, all your shrubs and plants in your, in your garden beds, which makes a lot of sense because, you know, doing it with a handheld one is not always beneficial. Yeah, one of the, the worst things you can do is, like, power wash the oh, soil gosh. away from the roots of your plant. And that's uh, sometimes the bloomers, new, new employees will think they're, you know, watering more efficiently by the high pressure stream that they're mm-hmm. able to come up with that, you know, by, and that is the worst thing you can do because now you're exposing baby roots to the sun and to drying out. Yeah. So again, it, a soaker hose is a great idea. Mm-hmm. Soaker hose is a great idea. And that doesn't matter if you're planting a, foundation planting with shrubs or a perennial garden garden, or even a vegetable or or annual bedding plant. What it does is it emits that, that, that water that oozes out of that pipe Mm -hmm. and keeps it moist, not wet. And anything that you've read online, Aaron (laughs) has said, uh, (laughs) has said that it's again, you need to keep the plants moist, but not wet. One, one thing I would add to that, Len, is uh, use a timer because I've uh, left mine on overnight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and Pittman's water is expensive, you told me. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> that's right. And that, that's, that's a great thing. I mean, because it's, it's a battery-operated battery. thing yeah. and that you can time it so that it comes on like every second day or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's, it, you have control over it. Mm-hmm. And I like, I like people that will water – with a hose and soaker hose before they use their sprinkler system. Oh, yeah. Because their sprinkler system, they just assume that it's going to do the right job, and, and it's, it, it may be watering, overwatering a plant, and that where it's just too much water or not enough. enough it's like, yeah. oh, I have it every zone, it's 20 minutes, and I have it on, you know, it's yeah. every other day, and, you know, maybe, but sometimes that's not enough water. Not enough water. If you have like something that's a little root bound, mm-hmm. what I suggest is I actually tell people take one of those nursery pots right. that you just put it over that sprinkler head 
and water by hand yeah. in that area. That's right. So that's a good good uh, good advice. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I I'm gonna plant and you know, I, I let one plant go a little, it's wilted down, and I watered it, and it popped back up. But all of a sudden, it's starting to get, like, brown tips on the leaves. Mm-hmm. It happens. It it's does. not going to kill the plant. Yeah. In our, our bloomer's warranty, we, we warranty our plants for one year. But in that warranty, it says that we, warrant, we guarantee the plant to live, but it's up to you to make it thrive. So I think most garden centers are in the same, you know, that same area. If, yeah. if you didn't take care of it well and you just don't like the way it looks because it doesn't look as perfect as the day you got it, it's a living thing. It, it needs to, to grow into its space. And that sometimes, you know, you may have a plant that just doesn't look good, but it's not dead. Just keep mm-hmm. taking care of it. Right. It'll be fine. Oh, yeah. That's Flush it. out and you get two growths during the, the growing season, for the most part. Uh, that goes for most plants. Your initial spring growth, usually a lot of things are flowering then. And then you have another growth during the, I don't know, I'd say mid-late summer. Late summer, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's really, you know, towards the middle to end of July. It's coming up. And then that starts to swell again. So... Any of those uh, brown tips that you had when your initial, you know, install, that they're going to get covered up by new growth. So yeah. don't, 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 don't get all don't freaked all out about it. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. So, um, again, it, it mm-hmm. it's a great time to plant because of the selection. Um, and our next segment coming up it, it's, is one of my favorite things because a lot of people just don't know what to put in or how to put it. What are the rules uh, a few weeks back, we had a caller that asked, like, a lot of the questions were, what am I supposed to do? Where can I get information? How do I know? And, like, we were sending them to Garden Gate and Monty Don, right? Uh, yeah. But we're going to talk more about the three pillars of landscape design. And this applies to everything from just a container garden to full landscapes. And we're going to talk about it in our next segment. We'll be right back after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Coast of Maine's Organic Castine Blend Organic Raised Bed Mix is the best soil for raised bed gardens, planter boxes, and container gardens. It grows amazing vegetables. It is made with a mixture of manure compost, worm castings, lobster and kelp meal, mycorrhiza, green sand, and biochar. It's ready to use straight out of the bag with no need for additional components or tilling. If you love growing fresh and hearty vegetables, herbs and flowers, Coast of Maine's Castine Blend Organic Raised Bed Mix is the perfect choice for you. At Coast of Maine, we believe in growing organically and buying locally. Castine Organic Raised Bed Mix can be found at these fine stores. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Is she gone? Nope, she's still standing there. What is she doing? I think she's watching the grass grow. (gasps) That's our job. I know, right? She's watching the grass grow, the flowers grow. Ooh, look, the trees are growing. I can't say as I blame her. Remember where she bought all this stuff? Duh, bought us there too. Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Find us online at bloomers.com. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. 
Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len. He's Julio. Aaron's over there. <laughs> Sam, I didn't forget you. Hey, I'm here too. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. All right. So you decided that it's okay to plant in the summer. But how do you know how to design a good landscape? The three pillars of a good landscape are color, texture, texture and form. form. <laughs> color, texture, and form. What does that mean? Okay, so let's start with color. Color can be flowers, and with many plants, it's a one-time bloom cycle. So you get color during that period as opposed to like roses where they'll flower all spring, all summer, and then even into the fall. A lot of times there are uh, foliage color which is even even better, like uh, hookara, Ooh. also known as coral balsa. There's hosta, which give you great foliage color. Uh, give me another one that has good foliage color. Uh, let me see. As far as uh, perennial or shrub or anything? Anything. He's, anything. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, he's stalling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i got to think. You know what's a, a nice one right now is a spiria, and uh, the one we have has like a uh, yellowish tint on the on the actual leaves. Okay, it's really pretty, like a gold mound spiria. Gold, yes, gold mound spiria is one. The wagilias, the new wagilias, or yeah. dwarf wagilias that are burgundy, burgundy. deep, deep red. Yeah, all of those colors are like paint to a canvas. Mm. You need basic foundation plants too. Where basic foundation plants are are mostly like evergreens, like uh, say Japanese holly, even azaleas. Even though they do flower in the spring, that they're not necessarily going to be major rebloomers. Even though there are a lot of new reblooming azaleas, mm -hmm. it's not like they're going to be that initial bloom where it covers the plant. They will always have some color on it, but it's not something that you would consider. Color. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when they're flowering, yes, mm -hmm. um, you know, where that initial flower, but most of the time they're going to be a green leafed, small green leaf plant. Boxwood. Boxwood. Yep. It's another green. foundation plant. Mm -hmm. You can count on it. You know, people always ask, what's it going to do? And I'm saying, you know, you're looking at it. <laughs> you know, it's going to be green yeah. and it's going to be, be green. And why is that important? Aaron, we, we talk about white space all the time as far as in, in ads and stuff. And that the green that you're talking about is a foundation, almost as if it's a to the picture frame. Like, for instance, you, you have a beautiful painting, but without the picture frame, it wouldn't quite look as pretty. Yes? That's right. Yeah. All right. All right. Julio, mm -hmm. let's talk texture. Yeah, you have uh, lacy uh, texture, right? Yeah, lacy like, like fern is a, is a ferns. Fern is like a lacy dwarf Japanese maples. Yeah, another one. Okay, lacy foliage of uh, Russian sage mm -hmm. is another lacy. Yeah, I love that one. Right, gold thread gold cypress. Thread cypress. Yeah. Grasses are another. Uh, Grasses that. also add that different texture in, mm -hmm. and what that does is it breaks up areas where. It become it can become monotonous. I, I was watching oh, yeah. Love It or List It. You have any idea what I'm talking about? No. Aaron, <laughs> you must have watched Love Absolutely. It. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So Love It and List It. They're showing this house. The landscape was awful. Oh. I mean, awful, awful. How come? Yeah, because it had nothing but brown meatballs in front of it. <laughs> there were boxwoods, and that's it. Oh, that's it. You know, two layers of round meatballs. Oh, my gosh. I wanted to jump through the screen. It's like, rip this out, rip that out, put this in. Because they needed some color, and they yeah. certainly needed a different texture. Mm -hmm. sure. So so you're talking about sameness, huh? Yeah. It, <laughs> monotony. monotony. Yeah, there it. you go. <laughs> but anyway, so, again, texture is is something that, that we talked about lacy, but also mm -hmm. there's, like, wide leaf like plants, like, Hydrangeas. Hydrangeas have like great big like cabbage leaves. Mm -hmm. 
they're big leaves. They're they're very nice. Um, but again, it's not the it's it's a different texture, those big leaves. Rhododendrons, even though rhododendrons and azaleas are in the same family, rhododendrons have big leaves, so it gives them a different texture. Well, you mentioned grasses. There are dwarf grasses and there are tall oh, grasses right. Right. where you take something like a liriope, that gives you both color and, and texture, texture and it flowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's awesome. How about form? What is a form? Form is like a commoner. I have a barberry in front of my house, and uh, they're, it's a golden barberry, which is columnar, which is really pretty. And it kind of gives what me is that. A, what is columnar? Columnar means it's, it's uh, vertical, and so it's straight up, and it uh, gives you height. So you don't want everything being the same, uh, you know, width. And uh, so it, everything becomes Like the flat. big green meatballs. That's correct. <laughs> so pe so column, columnar, columnar, like a column. Column. Okay. There's pyramidal. Pyramidal, yeah. You know, pyramidal is, think of Alberta spruce as pyramidal. Um, pyramidal, the used to be pyramidal biota nana. <laughs> that was an old, old. plant. <laughs> and that where it was pyramidal and it was gold, but it was just cheap and it grew real fast. And <laughs> some old homes, you see it and they're about, you know, 18 foot tall. Oh, my. And everything under it's dead. Um <laughs> But pyramidal mm -hmm. could be, what else have we got? Junipers, some juniper. different varieties of junipers absolutely mm -hmm. could be pyramidal. Some hollies. Some hollies, if they're, and they're sheared that sheared way. That way yeah. and, and you can manipulate the different types of forms mm -hmm. through shearing. And don't fear. The shears. And, of course, there's rectangle. Mm -hmm. Rectangle. But then there's free form. Mm -hmm. So you take a plant. Like Pieris, when it's young, it is real full, but as it gets older, it kind of opens up and it becomes more free form. Same thing like with a PJM. Mm -hmm. PJMs get free form, even though, again, another type of rhododendron, but it's different in the way that it's used. And a lot of times you can shear stuff and, and force it into a shape, mm -hmm. but it's manipulating the shape. It really wants to be something else. When you're talking about manipulative shape, are you talking about um, because like you force it, like it's really it. supposed to be more of a rectangle, right. or or it's supposed to be taller and and, mm -hmm. and more irregular, and because you shear it all the time, you're forcing it into that shape, right? right. You know, um, tree form. There's a lot of tree forms, like of course trees, but but we're talking about things like tree roses. We talked last week about tree lilacs, mm -hmm. lilacs yeah. and that those forms have a place in the landscape. Usually it's a place where you want to show something off. It's, um, the, it, it's, it needs to be used only like ones and twos. Yeah. Okay. You can't go and like, you know, I've, I've had people, it's like where they think a plant has sex appeal or it has like, right. it shows I'm wealthy. Yes. And then they put the same plant in, like a hedge of dwarf Japanese maples. It's like, look at Ooh. me. Yeah, I got, <laughs> you know? I got it all here. And those who know, it's like, yeah, we're looking. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a problem? <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. um, one of the, the basics of landscape design is you always have tallest things in the corners yeah. and shortest things near the doors. You want to accentuate the entrance of the home. Now, I see it all the time. Little soldiers planted by the doors. And that after a few years, those little soldiers become more like aircraft carriers and they're gigantic. And that really, that they should be something shorter. Um, it's, it's really, it's hard to convince someone who wants to do that. Oh, yeah. I want soldiers by the door. You know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. don't do it. Some of the things you've got to do is you have to make, take measurements. Don't mess around. The length of windows, the heights of windows is extremely important because you're designing with the plants at full size. Mm -hmm. That's it. Don't, you know, just because it's, you know, six inches tall now and, and it's really cheap. And Aaron, what, what were you talking about? We were going through the nursery and what did I say? I said the cheaper the plant, the faster it glow, grows. Right? Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So if you've got windows that are only a foot high, you're not going to be able to put you know, junipers there or something that get to like mugo pines because they're going to get four foot and then you're yeah. going to not be able to see out your windows. Yeah. Yeah. Scale's important. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Um, Julio, let's talk about something else. Mm -hmm. It's the type of house that you own or home that you own on how you want to work it. Like, for instance, if you have a center hall colonial, Mm -hmm. you're pretty balanced. It's not like you can, can, you know, go off the reservation and have Mm -hmm. things that are like, you know, I don't know, lots of irregular Japanese looking, you know, Japanese varieties of plants like Japanese maples and such, but you can't do a progressive landscape. It's got to be pretty, um, pretty standard more, more. And like the house is, it's a colonial, but you can do things that are different where like have a cutting garden out in front of it. That's right. We were talking about that last year. Um, about having how I wanted a cutting garden sure. in front of my house mm-hmm. because I have a center hall colonial. Mm-hmm. What? How would you describe your 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 ranch? Yeah, style? I'm a rancher. Yeah, I, I can pretty much do you know uh, a mix of both modern and classic. Right. You know, and and, I, and it's real. You know, like you're talking about you know uh, you know having that frame. You know, I, uh, I frame mine with all my boxwoods, and in, in the center I put my uh, my perennials. And you're saying center? My, the, I have, center. I've had a, I've had a, um, I made so it the, like, the the boxwoods are I, against the house. No, I have I've used the whole front of my house. Right. You know, I've, so, Where are the boxwoods? Uh, boxwoods are on the on the front of my uh, property and on the sides. Are you okay. creating a low hedge, or and that you're right. planting behind it? Right. I'm creating a, a low hedge, and then in the center of those hedges. I have about, you know, 18 feet to play with. Right. And I, there's where I put all my perennials. So that just says the importance of making sure that you're picking the right varieties. If That's you correct. make the mistake and pick a, a, a boxwood because today it's in a small pot mm-hmm. and you assume that it's a dwarf boxwood where you all of a sudden you find out that it's a Korean boxwood oh. and it's four and a half, five yeah. foot tall and it's real woody and it's uh-huh. not it, – rather than going with like an English boxwood English box or a green okay. velvet. Right. I, I, I love the idea of a hedge – like a dwarf hedge. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, there's a an actual, let's see, it's a blueberry variety that we have. And it's a dwarf blueberry. And it can be sheared into like that small, small miniature box. hedge about, you know, a foot tall uh-huh. and have that on the outside. Uh-huh. And you can go outside and you can pick your blueberries pick your blueberry. and eat your blueberries. That's right. And that it creates a, a nice um, start to mm-hmm. a colonial landscape behind it yeah that would be great foundation plantings first Mm -hmm. with woody plants Mm -hmm. and then a mixture of deciduous which means they lose their leaves Mm -hmm. and evergreens which means they keep their foliage it could be needle could be leaf and that you do a mixture so that again that breaks up texture yeah and form Mm -hmm. Color, texture, form. Color, texture, form. Some of the things you can add into a landscape on that's really on the cheap. Mm-hmm. First, cut stuff back. If you want to redo your landscape, try cutting it back first. Okay. And then add some color in by using some perennials. Mm-hmm. Perennials will give you foliage color all season and even some of the different textures, mm-hmm. flowers and things flowers like that. Like so consider that. Mm-hmm. Underused elements in the landscape are boulders. I, I love having a, na- a natural boulder that fits like where it's half buried into yeah. the landscape yeah. and that you kind of plant around it. Mm-hmm. Um, it becomes part of it almost. You use it like a plant almost. Driftwood. driftwood yeah. We used to sell driftwood like it was Crazy. no other. Yeah. Now driftwood has gone out of style, but I think driftwood has a place sure. in the landscape. Yeah. Yeah. Statuary, Statuaries, yeah. bridges to nowhere. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about Harry Reid. Okay, <laughs> that's the other show. <laughs> Sam, what time's that show on? What show? The, the political show on the other side. Oh, uh, the conservative guys. Oh, that's tomorrow. <laughs> that's tomorrow. Uh, what yeah. time? Uh, two or twelve to two. Twelve to two tomorrow, and the name of the show is. Well, there's conservative voice on Friday. Conservative voice on Friday. All right. Anyway. Just yeah. a little plug in. Free plug? That's a little free plug. Yeah, wow. <laughs> we can reciprocate. Let's tell yeah, them that uh, the gardening yeah. guys, garden uh, guys, yeah, garden yeah. guys mentioned them. Checks in the mail. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but statuary is something where it can 
give your landscape an identity that's, that's right. totally yours. You know, art can you know you can put art in there. You know when we went to uh, Trenton, what's that place called? Uh, Come on, uh, Come on, uh, Julio's uh, praying this uh, work. You should see the smoke. Sculptures, folks. sculpture uh, <laughs> grounds. Ground for sculpture. For sculpture. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Been talking about that place for how long, Holy? When did you get? Did, <laughs> do you went by it, right? You yeah, I went in. It's a beautiful. Oh, exhibit. you went in. Yeah. yeah. Took my wife. Whoa! Yeah, you we kept telling me about that. that's a great day night. It <laughs> is. <laughs> it is. Say that anyway. But uh, grounds for sculpture is a great place. But but the issue having like a a good sculpture, it's you're you're going to buy a concrete statue. Or you're going to buy a I, – some of the new statues right. that are, are made from plastics. Uh, uh, no, plastic? And what happens <laughs> is they fade and they yeah. look old. They oh, just yeah. look, they don't look right. dingy. Yeah. Where if you use something concrete and it, all the paint washes away and it just is concrete, it still looks pretty cool because it looks like – it's old it's and, and it's aged and, and it gets a little bit of algae, say, on it where it's it gets a little colors. That, yeah, that rustic look. Huh? I, I, I like have that. something from my late wife loved and, and yeah. it's called the goat girl. The goat girl. <laughs> and, and it's just a, it, it's a, a young girl uh-huh. that is obviously a goat herder. Nice. And it's just it's just one of those things. It's just really, really nice. It's not. You know, in your face, gigantic lion. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's something that uh, just says, you know, it's just something unique, memorable, unique. Yeah. And we have two cherubs oh, you that actually are they? They're giggling, oh, nice. and that they one has its leg up, and they're both next to one another and like giggling. You have that out there? It's now? fun. Yeah, that's oh, out yeah. there. Oh, nice. That's out there. Nice. And it's those kind of things that you find something unique, buy it. Yeah. Because you can add it and it can make the landscape in your home that much more unique than just looking like the cookie cutter builder plan that they put, that in, they, they put in when they first built the house. Sure. And the only other thing I'd say is lighting. Mm-hmm. Lighting makes a dramatic effect. Um, lighting is something that you can try to do yourself. Uh, there, I'm not sold on the solar lighting. Simply because what happens if you have a shaded area, yeah, yeah. you know, so lighting should, uh, should be something, an element to put into your landscape. So always consider that, but we're running out of time for this segment. Hold yeah, on. I know. You know, if they have any, anybody have any questions or anything, or they don't understand how to do all this, you got to come into the garden centers and, uh, right. and, and we'll give you all those tips that we've been talking about. Right. And we, we will hold your hand. We'll lay it out. Right in the middle of the nursery so you can right. see what it looks like. Right. You know, it's not something where you're going alone and you're just going into the nursery department and just, I think this is right. Yeah. You know, the garden centers, independent garden centers are the place to go because they are the ones with the knowledge that can help you mm-hmm. pick something that will live the life of the that's house. That's correct, yes. Uh-huh. So, and you'll have a lot of fun, too, while you're at it. That's right. And you'll make good friends, and that's they'll right. always be there. It's like, you know, I've got this hey. bug or I have this thing. The leaf looks funny. <laughs> right. And that that's what we answer all day long. Uh-huh. So, all, all right. right. We've got to take a break. We'll be right back in the garden with hummingbirds right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface-feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface feeding insect. It does it all guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva, a Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. 
If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds, on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below and expect to have the best looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. If you're like me, then you absolutely love birds. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center has you covered. They're dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds of all sorts. Want to bring more birds to your yard? Then you got to see this place. Bloomers has a huge flock of feeders, bird houses, bird seed, and much, much more. Want to feed the birds and not the squirrels? They have this absolutely cool bronze bird feeder that will drive those sneaky squirrels nuts. They'll be moving to the next door neighbor in no time. OMG! Bloomers have these absolutely adorable birdhouses that will turn your yard into the perfect bird B&B. They carry all types of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. Bloomers stocks, Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and much, much more that will keep those beautiful birds coming back for more. Bloomers Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County. For more information and directions, check them out on the web at bloomers.com. Bloomers Home and Garden Center, you got to see this place. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hummingbirds are like flying flowers, acrobat to the air, able to hover and move in any direction. The only bird able to fly backwards. That burns a lot of energy, folks. It does, doesn't it, Lynn? And they need nectar. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, fuel. <laughs> it is. It's rocket fuel. Nectar yes, is. is rocket fuel for rocket hummingbirds. Fuel. <laughs> Their lifestyle is so fast-paced, uh, energy-intensive, that they must consume half their body weight wow. and drink almost eight times their body weight in nectar just to get through one Ooh. day. Well, they, could you imagine you had to, you had to I do that? I couldn't handle it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. We, we were talking about dieting before, yeah, during, the, during the break. <laughs> it's like, I, you know, they say sometimes you need to eat more food because it helps you digest. Maybe that's the, yeah, their secret. But yeah. hummingbirds just love mm. nectar. Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah. uh, th- think about this. If you translated what they need into a scale of a size of a human, translate to... 155,000 calories a day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> you can't sit around with that. <laughs> and what what are we getting to? You need to put out a hummingbird feeder when the, let's just say, like if we go through a drought period and some of the flowers aren't producing as much, they need it to supplement. They need to supplement that. So get a hummingbird feeder and the, and the best thing, hummingbird feeders that that i know are some of the ones by perky pet and that they they look like that traditional feeder where it looks like those plastic funky yellow flowers (laughs) and hummingbirds are just attracted to to red and that's why so many hummingbirds are red or hummingbird uh, feeders Feeders are red um it's just one of the many flowers that they go to are red and it also helps. 
if you get on a route, like a hummingbird, literally, you know, it's, it's like the mailman. Instead of delivering mail, it's taking nectar from each of the flowers and, it, and it'll go through your yard and it'll be back. I tell you, it's, they're amazing. Yeah, they they're are. amazing. Yeah. They don't hang around in flocks generally. They, they kind of get pissed off or they do fight mm -hmm. for, for their mates and things like that. Territorial. Um, and, yeah. and that there's a joke in here somewhere <laughs> there is that something. I'm going to just leave on the table and not say anything other than not talk about any of the folks here at the show. But mating takes about half a second, which yeah. the female zooms off to a nest and lays eggs to incubate them and raise chicks by herself. So, boom, done. Done. We're out of here. Hasta la vista. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Yep. Um, and that the thing is, is that, the the nests are tiny. The nests like are like a little bit bigger than a bottle cap. Mm, it, it it's just an incredible, incredible animal. Mm. Your hummingbird will will be a supplemental source of nectar for all the hummingbirds that are in your area, but they have to find it. So if you're planting some flowers nearby, like lobelia and crocosmia, some of those are great flowers that hummingbirds just love. Uh, a lantana, which kind of goes against what you hear. They don't you know, want to have a trumpet-type flower. Lantana, to us, yeah. looks not, not like, like a, a trumpet-type flower, but they may see differently. Mm -hmm. They have a different they have a different sight that they see things differently through their eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah, You've got to make sure that you take care of that feeder. Mm -hmm. You want to wash it in between fillings. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where it becomes hard. You've got to empty the feeder every three or four days. Yeah, when, if it's hotter, the more often you need to do it. Because what happens is that you've got all sugar, basically, a sugar mixture, um, an alcohol. What is this? Simple, a simple syrup, right? Isn't that like basically sh all sugar? Yeah. So there, there have this glass or clear plastic simple syrup of it basically – Again, it's all sugar that's sitting in the sun, and it's fermented. And basically, you can either – I mean, they can get drunk. from <laughs> they, they, ingest, they ingest it without it being cleaned or worse that it can hurt them, can get them sick. So you got to make sure that you're, you're changing out – you're changing out that, that – uh, the, the feed, the nectar in your thing. I, and – there's an argument, you know, do you make your own? Do you not make your own? Uh, I, I would rather just get the pouch and I want it red. Mm -hmm. I want it to, to be red so I can see from a distance whether my hummingbirds are actually taking mm -hmm. and, and using yeah, it. It's easier to see. And you don't have to use it all at one time. What yeah. you can do is make your mixture, keep it, it, keep it in a bottle, mm -hmm. plastic bottle, put it in the refrigerator yeah. and then pull it out and yeah. don't put your feeder out until it's reach room temperature. You don't want to, you know, give them brain Cold. freeze. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Their brains are pretty small. Yeah, are. And, and actually, did you know a hummingbird's like tongue yeah. that goes into a flower right. that actually wraps up in the back of oh, their head? Gosh. So it, it's kind of like a, like a, I guess it would be like a spring that comes out. Boom. Yep. And that, that's, right that's how it does yeah, it. Amazing. That's how it does it. Now, if you want to make your own solution, you can. It's one part uh, refined sugar and one part or four parts water. Okay. So if you take a quarter cup of sugar and one cup of water and you bring that solution to a boil, some say you don't have to boil it, but if you boil it, it just make sure that it's completely uh, melted down. And that anything left over, you make sure you, you go ahead and put it in the refrigerator so you can use it later. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're buying a hummingbird that is functional, not pretty. Uh, you can get both. Bloomers has both. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure that it is a functional feeder. And again, a lot of them have that same traditional look because of that. But one thing that I love, I have a top fill feeder yeah. where I only have to screw the top off. Right. And pour it in. That's easy. Right. Rather than having to take everything apart. But you do need to clean it. Yeah. I would clean it every other time yeah. that you're refilling it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something to to, yeah, to make it. sure that you do it right. Anything to add, Julio? No, they're, they're incredible. Like you are saying, I like the fact that they 
fly backwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're going to hear them. You'll yeah. hear them before you see them oh, yeah. because they sound like, you know, a, a, a bee almost, yeah. but a big, a big, big bee. bee. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Holly Tone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. With all the rain that we're having, so much rain that mosquitoes are an issue. I went out the other day, and man, they were like on me, like I was slathered with with candy. (laughs) Um, But you know what? Only females bite. Oh, yeah. You did know that? Yeah. <laughs> What's he trying to say, Lynn? He's, 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 he's pretending. You know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, did I, did I see you the other day, like, you know, yeah. giving gestures to cars going by? Right. Hey. Boy, who are you? I don't know. He's faking it until he makes it. I see it. Yeah, I Man, you. Julio. All right. I thought you may have known that. Uh, Mosquitoes can breed right. in as little water as a bottle cap. It. So a teaspoon, mm. teaspoon of water. Mosquitoes can lay up to 300 eggs. Mm-hmm. And what they do is so, so the mosquito flies down, goes on your arm, sucks out some blood, mm. and then lays 300 eggs. Oh, my gosh. And you're like scratching. Yeah. And, and like you're making those welts bigger. Yeah. The best and most effective way to control mosquitoes is by getting rid of standing water. That's number one. And the one thing to use, and, and that we sell lots of it it's for ponds, for bird baths, you name it, it's something called mosquito dunks. Now, if you're looking on our YouTube channel, you will see them. 
Uh, mosquito dunks, it's a biological. A- any of you who are gardeners out there have probably heard about BT, Bacillus thuringiensis, that where it, that's what that is. So it's organic. It does not hurt the birds if you put it in a bird bath. Um, again, you're trying to eliminate any of that standing water issue. Now, say you have a bigger thing. You're not sure where they're coming from, but your yard is kind of always wet. If you're going to have a party, there is a type of repellent. And it almost, like, I make fun sometimes where there's some different um, organic oils that are mixed together. And it's, you know, geranium oil and it's garlic Article. and it's all it's, it's like it almost sounds like it's a uh, salad Edible. dressing. Yeah. Where you got to make sure that you're, you're, if you want a repellent, you have to make sure that you're looking for those specific items. You look in the active ingredients and it'll give, give a list of different type of oils. Now, the other part of that is that if you want to kill them, okay, if you want to kill them. We do. Th- then <laughs> you do. <laughs> All right. Julio, if you want to kill them, oh. you've got to look for the active ingredient where it's a permeth. Thrin, right? So there we go with a thrin. Um, also, Bear, or I guess it's BioAdvance, has a, an actual like uh, little tablet for water that you could use. And that, that actually active ingredient is spinosad, which is also organic. So again, the thing that I would do is I would spray the thrin. And I would try to control them. But again, do this at night when all of the pollinators are asleep. You don't want to do it during the day, spraying around so that you might hit a pollinator or a good bug. Because what you're trying to do is really control those mosquitoes. When those when those mosquito tr- I can remember. Remember the mosquito trucks? Oh, yeah, I remember them. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. Did you, you have yeah. mosquito trucks, Aaron? Yeah. Yes, we do. Did, did you ever follow them? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. As a did kid, you? I was like yeah. running behind them. You know, maybe yeah, that explains is. a lot. Yeah, that was yeah, probably yeah, like really. 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah well, gosh. well, I'm running. That's probably... 40, 50 years ago. Anyway. Whatever happened to them? <laughs> but oh, they still have them. Yeah. They do it by air. In Florida, man, they're they're oh. like serious because of that whole malaria thing. Yeah. No kid. But again, con- go into your local garden center. They have what you need to make your party pest free this 4th of July. Yeah, there you go. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Sickles Market, Little River, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. 
Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvests. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at fine garden centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider, or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Sam is yelling at us oh because we're gosh. taking too long, Come on, Julio. Uh, all right, so now. what's bugging you, Julio? Uh, I'll tell you what. Wasp and the hornets, they're like all over the place. <laughs> they are. Look, we know they're pollinators. We get it. But they can sting, and man, it hurts. Oh, you better believe Jenny, it. Jenny, she was like oh. almost like, geez, she, oof, she was in the hospital yeah. because she had this weird skin infection that yeah, happened. Yeah. So look, if you want to get rid of wasps and you want to get rid of hornets, mm-hmm. oh, what worst thing, right? Yellow jackets. Oh, another. Ugh. All right. So what you, what we want you to do is you want to go out. And you can use a spray and the, use the aerosol cans. It shoots up to twenty oh, feet. There you go. That's far and enough. And the great thing about these is that it has a knockdown agent. So you know it makes them pass out before they have a chance to go and sting you. That's right. So don't be too worried about it. Yeah. And what's always weird is it has this thing um, on the actual can or the or the label where it says, let's see, it talks about how, like, electric companies use this stuff all the time. And the issues with the electric company is that they're spraying where the volts can go and trace back to this can. So when it says non-conductive, like, for instance, the – one of the, the ones that we have by Bonide, non-conductive up to 47,000 volts. That means, I guess, 50,000. It does. <laughs> it is conductive. So it, it's it's going to be safe. Um, I know you're confused by that. So was I. But I do understand it. So if you're spraying at a near electric, it's safe. safe. Um, look, if the... Wasps and hornets, like mud daubers, that with paper wasps, if they're just in the wrong spot and threaten your family, yeah. you need to act. Mm-hmm. And that I'll leave it up to you and environmentalists with complaints. Please call Julio Zamora, care of Bloomers in the Garden dot com. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Here we are. We're back learning in the schoolyard, Julio. Yeah, Yeah. amazing. Sam's mad at us. I know he is. We're way over. (laughs) We're way over. So you're going to hear the cut version Uh on the radio. But those of you listening Uh online, you'll hear the whole thing. We are going to be right here in the garden next week at this same time. Please listen. Tell your friends. Give us a call. If you've got a problem, we've got got the the answer. 
What's that telephone number, Julio? 609-685-1880. There you go. We'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden.